welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on the topic structure of the atom and the periodic table and our focus today will be writing formulas and these formulas are going to be derived from the monoatomic ions. So when you talk about monoatomic ions you are basically talking about ions made up of one atom so first we are going to learn how to name these ions uh, different ions and then after that you will now form compounds and then you will get an opportunity to see some practice questions and then we we'll do an exercise so first you start by naming of the monoatomic ions and the monoatomic ions can fall on both sides cations and anions so when we are naming monoatomic cations, they usually fall into two groups. They are those that can occur with a specific charge. These are usually the 20 elements. And then there are the ones, there are also those that can possess more than one charge, which are usually the transitional elements. So when we are like writing these chemical names or naming them, we usually leave, especially for the cations, we usually leave the final word as an ion. An example is hydrogen ion. You can see how we are writing. Um, it's just an ion. The name is not changing. We have sodium ion. We have the potassium ion. You see the word potassium is being retained. We're just adding an ion at the end. We have lithium ion we have the calcium ion we have the aluminium ion uh, we have the barium ion and the magnesium ion so the next you're going to look at anions still among us the 20 elements and how we, we name them so when you look at anions they usually named with a uh, adding of an ide we mentioned this when we were looking at form one compounds in simple classification of substances you can go back and check that out so always the anions will always add with an ide so you see the chlor the chlorine ion is the is called now chloride ion bromine becomes bromide iodine becomes iodide sulfur beca becomes sulfide and remember you can write this name with also ph uh, phosphorus becomes phosphide uh, and so forth and so on. So that's how we usually write the names for uh, anions. So what about the cations that form more than one ion? Basically the ones that are in the transitional element. So they're the ones that we are going to look next. So when we are naming this one, we usually put the charge or uh, the valency in bracket or the oxidation number in the bracket. So when you look at the ion ion, you usually say ion 2 ion. You put the 2 which represents the charge or the valency or the oxidation number. Remember all these are usually the same. They only, they only have small differences as we discussed earlier on. So ion 3 ion, see how we are putting the 3. Copper 1 ion, we need to specify. And copper 2 ion, manganese 2 ion. Organist 3 ion, lead 2 ion, and then lead 4 ion. So we have been able to see how we are able to name these monoatomic cations. So we saw the monoatomic cations, the ones that have only one possible charge. And then we saw the anions, how they are names. And now we have looked at the cations that have more than one possible charge. So you need to remember that even as we get to forming compounds because you will be forming compounds and naming them. You cannot form a compound and just leave it hanging. So what are some of the things that you consider when you are naming a chemical uh, a compound? So first we write the chemical formula. So we know that elements usually combine to form compounds just like we said in form one. So a chemical formula is usually a representation now of that compound or the chemical substance using chemical symbols. And it usually shows the constituent elements in the chemical compound. And these elements, you usually know the proportions or amounts in their specific combinations. 
So when we are writing uh, chemical formulas, the first thing that you need to know is that the element that is more likely to start is the one that loses electrons. So basically, we start with the cation. And then it is followed by the element that is more likely to gain, which is the anion. And in order for you to write a correct formula, there are a number of things that needs to be known. First of all, you need to know the symbol of the element or the radical. So elements are the 20 elements, inclusion of some of the transitional elements. There are some ones that will always be talked about in chemistry, although they are not among the, 12, the 20 elements. So the radicals also, we mentioned them in the previous lesson. You can go back in the video and watch that. So you need to also know the symbols of those radicals because you use, you use them uh, to form the, the formulas. And then you also need to know the valencies of the elements and radicals. And you know valencies are the amount of electrons lost or gained, as we discussed earlier on. So the steps of forming uh, formulas or chemical formulas for monoatomic ions, first of all, you list the cations and anions. So let's look at an example as you go through the steps, lead to oxide. So this is an example of a compound made up of lead and oxygen. And the two we said belongs to lead. So when we are listing the cations, so the symbol for lead is going to be Pb. The symbol for oxygen is going to be O. We said that you list the cation first, so the cation is lead and then the anion comes next. The next, quest, the next step is to identify their valencies. So when you look at lead, the valency from the word lead to ion, it tells us that the valency for lead is going to be two. And then the valency for oxygen is also two. We know that the valency of oxygen is two because it's atomic number eight. So the configuration is 2.6. It requires two electrons to form an octet uh, kind of configuration in the outermost electron. So that's why the valency is two. And then the next uh, is you crisscross the valencies. So we are going to take these two and move, bring it here. And this other two, we bring it here. So when we crisscross the two valencies, we form something like this. And then the next, the next statement is cancel out the valences that can be cancelled out. So when you look at these two valences that we have discussed, both of them are 2, 2. So they can actually cancel out. If you divide by 2 and divide this by 2, you're going to form 1 and this one you're going to form 1. So we end up with the lead 1 and oxygen 1. But in chemistry, we don't have to write the 1, the, the one because it already shows that we only have one element. So our answer becomes lead lead oxide and it's written like that so but there are some cases you can have more than two two for example when you look at this lead four oxide it's called lead four oxide and you can see we have when you crisscross the valences you had two and four so in this case you can actually cancel out by dividing by two by two to form one and this by two so you have a one here and two, but you don't put one. But there are some also that cannot be canceled out that they are not uh, able to. If they are not able to be canceled out, you leave them alone. So let's look at a few examples so that you can be able to practice. So we will start with sodium chloride. So sodium chloride, you see we are starting with the cation, which is sodium. And then the chloride ion, the chlorine or the chloride ion, which is the anion. So when you look at the two, the sodium comes first because it's a cation, and the chlorine comes next because it will form the anion. So what are the valencies? The valency of sodium is one. The valency of chlorine is also one. We know valencies from the previous video. You can go and check that out. So when you get the valency, the next step is crisscrossing the valencies. So let's crisscross the valencies. So this one comes here and this other one comes here. So we have sodium, one, chlorine, one. But we said we do not write ones in chemistry because it already, it already shows that it's already one atom or one element. So we leave it as sodium chloride.
So it becomes like this. So this is our final answer. So let's look at another example, magnesium chloride. So you start with a cation. The element that can form a cation is magnesium. The chlorine that can form a cation called chloride is Cl. Next, you get the valences. The valency of magnesium is 2 and the valency of chlorine is 1. Next, you crisscross the valences. So you bring these two here and then bring this other one here. So you get up, you get magnesium with a 1 and chlorine with a 2. So we said you do not write 1, so it becomes MgCl2. So this becomes our final answer. Let's do a few more practices. So magnesium oxide, so the formula for magnesium is Mg. Formula for oxygen is O. Magnesium has a valency of 2. Oxygen has a valency of 2. So you crisscross the charges. This will give you Mg. Oh, remember, we do not write the twos. And the reason why we are getting MgO, do not forget, we said it becomes Mg2O2, but these ones can be cancelled out. You cancel this to form one, and you cancel this to form one. So it becomes Mg1O1, but we don't write the one one. So this becomes our final answer. So another example is calcium fluoride. So the symbol for calcium is Ca. And the valency is 2. Fluorine, the symbol is F. There's a tendency for, for students to write FL. Do not forget it's just F. So the symbol uh, this is F and the valency is 1. So we crisscross these valencies. So it becomes calcium and then F2. So it becomes calcium fluoride. Let's do another example of a two oxide. So this example is coming from the transitional element. And remember the two represent the valency, the oxidation number, or the charge of copper. So the symbol of copper is Cu. Check out the video on that as well. So from the bracket, you can tell the valency is two. And then oxygen, which is among the 20 elements, the valency is always two. So next we crisscross the charges. So we get copper with a, a two and oxygen with a two. So we have two twos. Remember these ones can be canceled out to divide by two, divide by two both sides. So we finally get copper oxide with one one, but we don't write the one one. One more example, iron 3 chloride. So this is also a transitional element uh, that has formed a compound with chlorine. So the symbol for iron is Fe and the valency is 3. We get the valency from what is the bracket. And then chlorine, we have done this before, valency is 1. So next we, we crisscross the charges. So we get iron with a 3 and chlorine, sorry, with a 1 and chlorine with a 3. So when you look at this 1 and 3, we cannot cancel them out, so they remain the same, but we do not write 1. So it becomes FCl3, and that is our final answer. So next, you can be given a formula and then you're told to name it. I told you naming is also part of the subtopic. So for now, we were look, using the name to look for the formula. So what if you are told the other way around? So we are going to be naming some compounds. So like this one is going to be potassium. The name potassium remains, as we said, in the naming of monoatomic ions. And then chlorine becomes chloride. If you remember what we said, you add the IDE. Then this one becomes ion. But remember, these two here came from the ion. It was the valency of the ion. Since the valency of chlorine is 1, as you can see on the ion. So it becomes ion. And then in bracket 2, in Roman numbers, chloride. 
So I hope you've gotten that. It was iron with a valency of 2 and then chlorine with a valency of 1. If you crisscross this, you get iron and then Cl2. So that is the reason why we are calling it iron 2 because the valency of iron was 2. And then the next one is this. So this we'll call it iron. Don't forget these three came from the iron as we showed in the previous example. So it becomes iron 3 chloride. And then this one, now this one you have to check it out. It's aluminium with a 2 and sulfur with a 3. So if we go back, it means this was here and this was here. So it becomes our aluminium had a valency of 3, then our sulfur had a valency of 2. Don't forget that. But it will be called aluminium sulfide. The pH can also be changed with F. And then this becomes lead 2 oxide. We can see why the valency of lead is 2, oxygen is 2, so they cancel out completely. That's the reason why it's 1,1. One, one. So it becomes lead 2 oxide. Yes. And then finally, the last one, this becomes magnesium phosphide. You notice for the elements that are on the 20 elements, both cation and iron, we do not need to put the valences in bracket. But for the transitional elements, it's important we put them in bracket because they have different charges. They can form varied charges. So this becomes magnesium phosphide. You see the IDE, IDE. This all comes from the anions. So that's how we name. So the next thing that we are going to look at is, can we be able to identify the number of elements in, our, in the compound? We will need this information later on when we'll be looking at the topic on balancing, balancing equation. So let's do that. So, you come to the calculation of the atoms later on in the next uh, uh, subtopic, because for in this case, for example, if we were looking at to count the number of ions or uh, elements in this compound, uh, in this case, you can see potassium chloride, we have one potassium, one chlorine. So naming of monoatomic compounds are usually a bit not that tricky as we would later on to see on the uh, transitional, the radicals or polyatomic ions. So up here we have iron one as one atom and then chlorine, there are two atoms. Iron, there is one atom. Uh, chlorine, there are three atoms. Aluminium, there are two atoms. And sulfur, three atoms. Lead, we have one atom and oxygen, one atom. And finally, we have magnesium, three atoms, and phosphorus, two atoms. So this will come to be very uh, core, especially when we are looking at the radicals or the polyatomic ions. So let's look at a few questions to clarify what we have discussed, and then we, come, we bring the session to an end. So set the correct names for the following ions. So we have that. So you call this one sodium ion. Remember we said these ones are cations and they do not change their names. This one becomes, since it's a transitional element, it becomes copper. Two, because of the charge, ion. And then this becomes sulfide. Remember this is an anion, ion the IDE. This is a transitional element, so it becomes zinc in bracket, the two iron. This becomes nitride, it's an anion. And then chloride ion. Yes, so that's how we are able to give the correct names. Next, write the chemical formula of the following compounds. 
So sodium chloride will be sodium Cl because both valences are 1, 1. Potassium sulfide, potassium valence is 1, sulfur valency is 2. So if you crisscross, it's going to give us K2S. And then magnesium fluoride, magnesium valency is 2, fluorine valency is 1. If you crisscross, it becomes MgF2. Then iron 3 oxide, valency of iron is 3, oxygen is 2. So if you crisscross this, it becomes iron 3 oxide, like that. And then copper 2 oxide, so the valency of copper is 2 from the brackets, oxygen is 2. If you crisscross this, it becomes copper 2O2, but this can be cancelled out to form copper oxide like that. So the next one is naming compound. This becomes magnesium. It retains it, its name. But the bromine now becomes bromide. Because it's an anion. This becomes iron. Don't forget the charge and it comes from the 3 because it is 3 comes from the iron. So it becomes iron 3 oxide. Then we have calcium oxide. Then we have beryllium chloride. And then we have aluminium sulfide. So that brings us to the end. I hope you have been able to see how the chemical formulas of monoatomic ions are usually written. Next, we are going to combine uh, the monoatomic ions with the radicals or polyatomic ions. So watch out for that. See you in the next session.